Um, good evening. I call the October 12th meeting of the Berlin Zoning Board of Appeals to order at 7.05. Um, this meeting is being recorded and all um, attendees are advised that they may have their image, voice, or in telephone number recorded for the record. Um, let me introduce the members of the board. As I call your name, please respond with present and raise your hand. Jim Royer. Denny Bartlett. Present. Uh, Pat Jackson. Present. Ginny Zakosinski. Present. Susanna Roberts. Present. And I know Keith Susie said he wasn't going to be able to make it. Okay, we had a seven o'clock hearing um, for Berlin Memorial School. Mr. Campbell isn't here as yet. So how about if we go to the minutes, Leanne? Okay. Minutes of uh, September 14th. I move to uh, the minutes of September 14th. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? If not, I'll do a roll call. Jim? Aye. Denny? Aye. Uh, Pat? Aye. Susanna? Aye. And Ginny? Aye. Okay. Um, we don't have any warrants, do we, Denny? Nothing. Okay. Hmm. Um, any communications that we need to know about? I um, I did, I received, um, an application was filed with the town clerk for our, um, the car, for a special permit and site plan um, for a vacant lot. Um, so that, that was, I didn't get it until yesterday because of the holiday, or actually today, but it was received on October 10th. Um, I sent it to you, um, Lynn, because the um, the application is very small. He used an outdated um, a butters list, even though he was told it was outdated and he would need an updated one. Um, so I, I don't know if this is even adequate and you want to accept it. Um, I um, spoke with the town clerk um, yesterday at noontime or so. Mm -hmm. and asked her if we had anything. And she mentioned to me that he was asking a lot of questions and it didn't look like um, he was gonna be ready. Um, yeah, he started this process over two years ago and the building commissioner, Richard Hanks has spent a lot of time with him. I've spent a lot of time with him walking him through the process. He's been before the select board cause he was kind of putting the cart before the, the horse. And he, it, the process was explained to him. And no matter how many times you explain it to him, he's just kind of doing his own thing. In Mr. Hanks's letter, that was there a letter from him included in the package? Yeah, he even updated his letter because the original letter was from August of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so he updated his letter and specified in his letter to review the requirements for the special permit under section 1220 and site plan approval requirements under section 1230, um, none of which it looks like he did. He did provide a, a drawing, but it's very, very small scale. Like I, can, I can't even read it. So it's not a big drawing or anything easily re readable by the, for the board to read. So okay. his, his, his application, his, Petition included his application, his letter from the building commissioner, his outdated abutter list from over a year ago, and then a very small site plan that's hard to read. Okay, if there's no objection by my colleagues, um, let me converse with him. Um, in its current form, do you folks feel it's acceptable? No. Okay, well, why don't we even vote on that? Um, I'll entertain a motion um, to uh, 
deny the re the uh, request. What's his name, Leanne? Uh, Louis Santos. Uh, by Mr. S <clears throat> Santos, um, because it does not meet the minimum requirements um, for an application. Would someone care to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? I will second. Thank you, Jenny. We'll, we'll do a uh, roll call vote. Jim? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Pat? Aye. Susanna? Aye. And Jenny? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, I'll converse with him and explain to him what he needs to do. Tonight was the last night that you could file in order to get on to. For November. Yeah, to get on for November. So um, I think I'll have to explain to him. There was nothing that I saw um, that um, Mr. Hanks had asked him about a pre existing non conforming lot, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah because I, I, I don't think he meets the size requirements, but we'll, I'll talk to Richard about that and I'll talk to the petitioner. Okay. Um, a couple of things I, I wanted to mention. Leanne was kind enough to say she'd look up for me. Whose term is expiring this year? It's uh, Pat. Um, Pat, I'm hoping you wish to continue. When do I have to let you know? <laughs> well, I would say it's up to the selectmen, okay? But um, what we would do would be send a letter to um, the selectmen uh, saying that you're willing to continue and that the board um, has, by consensus of the board, we would like to see you continue. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so it's got to be sent out now, right? Well, your term is up November 30th. And, oh, okay, um, okay. They usually vote in October, and I don't know when in October they would be voting. Okay, okay. folks, quick before she changes her mind. Is, okay. there a, is there a consensus that would like to see Pat continue? Jim? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Susanna? Aye, aye. Ginny. Aye, aye. Yeah, we, we're not letting you off the hook. A again, <laughs> you know, it's a five-year term, but um, it's obviously not mandatory that you serve out the whole five years. Okay. Uh, I'm the, she's the only one, right? Correct. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention that CPTC is getting active again. First of all, they're going to have their annual conference on March um, 18th. So if anybody is interested and, and you can kind of keep your, it's M-A-S-S, -S, Mass, C-P-T-C, uh, .org, I believe, and you can see. There is going to be a fall workshop. It's October 20th. It's roles and responsibilities of the planning board and ZBA. Um, they're also going to do open meeting law and conflict of interest in that seminar. You can go out to the website, register. They've upped their fee. It used to be $20 for webinars. Um, they've gone to $25. You would need to pay that online or by check. You can mail it. And the ZBA, if you um, get a receipt, would be glad to reimburse you for that. Um, 23. I missed the one that they had in June and I'm really spastic. I tried to register too late. I tried to register like two days before it was going to happen. Okay. Is there anything else anyone would like to bring up to the board?
Thank you, Pat, for agreeing to stay on. I, I think we have a very good board. I think we all work well together. And um, you would be sorely missed should you choose. I might have to resort to speaking to your significant other. Okay, do we want to take a break? Do we want to... Um, interesting conversation yes um anyone have anything that they'd like to share uh just as a, a side note mm -hmm. um, go ahead no was I'm yawning. excuse me yeah oh okay just as a side note i just took some continuing ed classes for my real estate broker's license and um it's interesting to see how they're uh, integrating the diversity and um, I wouldn't call it racism, but um, exclusion in some ways. Um, there is one state that their um, realtor board no longer wants you to use the word um, master bedroom. Um, <laughs> the when you're taking pick in Massachusetts, uh, the Mass Realty Board suggests when you're taking pictures that you be careful what you take pictures of. It should never include those that are living in the premises um, because that, based on their ethnicity, it could be considered. Uh, leading uh, not to take pictures of things like swing sets in the backyard that infers that it, it you know that it's um, a child neighborhood as opposed to an adult neighborhood and it's the familiar um, protected class that that would be against um, you can't say that it's family friendly I I'm just afraid these days to open my mouth, to be quite honest. Um, there's so many um, rules and it appears that, you know, offense could be found to any statement one makes. Did anyone attend last night's planning board um, forum? I made the mistake. It was both in person at the 1870 uh, town hall and it was um, on webinar. I think they're going to put it, um, you know, put, put the tape out there, but they were talking, you know, the survey they did about housing. Um, they had um, the principal for that uh, speak to the group. Um, and I think thought the planning board always meets at seven o'clock. So about 10 minutes to seven, I went in to join and it said you had to pre-register. Well, I tried to get in anyway after a while and it let you it let me in without registering. So that was good. But they started at 630. So um, I missed a good piece of it. I'm, I'm gonna look, there is a, a full-fledged report and the slides and the report is supposed to be out online for us to view. I'm not sure what the town needs right now is more housing, but they were talking about all the different types of housing that could be built. One of them was small homes or those little homes or what do they call them? Tiny houses. Tiny, tiny houses. houses, yes. And they were showing pictures of, you know, clusters of tiny houses and stuff. The results of the survey were kind of interesting as to what kind of housing folks would like to see in Berlin. I think it's kind of interesting that every time we have, uh, or in the past, whenever we've had one of the 40B projects, there's a uh, a significant portion of the town that basically doesn't want any additional housing built. 
um, and they're you know opposed to doing anything. Um, and the planning board seems to go both ways on that. I'm not sure how that's working out. At one point, they they talk about you know they they want to maintain the town's character, and the next one they're you know let's build this big development kind of thing. So it's kind of tough to figure out exactly what the thought process is in their uh, in the planning side. Yeah, I think most people are not against growth in Berlin, both residential, commercial, agricultural, whatever the na nature seems to be. But I do think they want it to be a controlled growth. We've had quite an explosion over the last 15 years. And there's no sign that it's going to slow down. Okay, Lynn, 722, still no petitioner for the first hearing. The second hearing starts at 730. Okay. Um, could I trouble someone to try to call Mr. Campbell? Let's see if let I have see, it. Let me see if it's in if his number is in the petitioner, if he gave the school number. I hope he didn't have another death in the family. There's a number here um, that's in Berlin. Yeah, it's the 838. I think that's the school. That's the school, yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay, the other, let's... other number was for the original applicant, which which was Mr. Positeri, so. He no longer works for the district, so. And the only number for Mr. Campbell is the school. Okay. Well, folks, I'll ask you what you want to do. We usually wait 20 minutes um, when a petitioner fails to appeal, uh, appear. So you can do one of two things. You can vote um, to continue the hearing or in which case um, I'll talk to uh, John and see what his intentions are. Um, and we're still within the time frame. We have an extension that would allow us to go through October, I believe. Yeah, um, with the extensions we have, a decision right now needs to be made by November 8th, which is the day before the next meeting. So we'd have to sign another extension if you continue. Okay. What's option two? I'm not sure which option option two is, Pat. Well, what is the other option besides an extension? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, the other option is due to the failure of the petitioner to appear, we, you could vote to um, mm. close the hearing and vote against it due to lack of participation. I think there's an option with two strikes. This is a town entity, but it's up to you folks. Um, someone needs to make a motion to either continue the hearing um, until November 8th, is it? Is that when we meet? Uh, November 9th. November 9th, okay. And But the extension only carries us to reach a decision by the 8th? Correct. Okay. What I'm going to do if I need to, if you choose option one, which is to continue it, we would need to hold uh, a very brief meeting sometime during the middle of the month in order that we could have a decision written um, and a decision reached um, by the 8th of November. Or you can just... Um, basically shut it down. Is there anyone willing to make a motion? I will make a motion to shut it down. This is Pat. No, it's Jenny. It's Jenny. Okay. I'll second that.
Okay, Jim. Um, is there any further discussion? I'm taking this motion to mean um, that we're voting to deny the uh, petition based on the the principles. Um, and that principle is two things. It's principle of the school and it's principle of the thing. Um, based on the principal's failure to participate in the last two hearings. Yes. If not, I'll take a roll call vote. Okay, Jim. Aye. Um, Denny. Aye. Pat. This is I. Uh, Susanna. I. Ginny. I. And I'm a no. Okay, that closes that out. What time is it here, folks? 727? 727, so three minutes before the next one. Okay. Lynn, did you happen to read the um, article in the paper about the mural in Marlboro being a zoning violation? What, what mural? It was a mural on the side of a dance built a studio, and it was deemed a sign, and uh, they had to paint over it. So. Uh, it makes me wonder if we need to look at our sign bylaws, if we have any. Well, it was, it was my understanding that the um, planning board was going to do that between now and town meeting and perhaps make changes um, to the sign. Um, bylaw and they were specifically going to look into the LED yeah for for true signs yes but this was this was a debate whether it was considered art or signage and i was just wondering i'll i'll just take a look at it and see if we have anything there that would be vague in, in a similar situation. That's terrific, Susanna. Susanna has been a very big help um, being a, a liaison along with myself to the planning board. When, when I can remember to go to the meetings, yes. <laughs> I have the same problem and you know, I should have looked at that ahead of time. I could have even gone to the 1870. They did the presentation from the hired gun that did this report and um, survey. And then they broke into groups to talk, but they shut off the webinar portion and just dealt with those that were there. I have no idea how many people were there. It, it wasn't obvious. Um, from the visuals that accompanied um, the webinar. Okay, I think it's 7.30, is it? It is 7.30. Yes. Okay. Therefore, I will open the continuation of the petition <coughs> by um, Kane Industrial Trust um, for a cannabis um, building, a cannabis site plan, um, special permit, and variants. Would you like me to promote the petitioner? I would appreciate it. Thank you.
There she is. Hello. Hi, Kathy. Hello. Um, do you have anything you'd like to um, offer to the board? Yes, I would. At our last meeting, we had some confusion on legalities of the petition as it was presented to the zoning board and with all of the lawyers back and forth and tags and vacations, they only spoke yesterday. So I was gonna respectfully request if we could continue until the next meeting so we would have time to present the information we need for you, your board to make any decision on both the special permit as well as the variance. Do you have a site plan prepared? <clears throat> well, the site plan that we presented the last time. Yes, but as uh, our council said, it doesn't meet the standards of our bylaw. Right, so that, that's, that's, that was the concern that we, you know, I basically had less than 24 hours to figure out what we needed to do because the lawyers never had a chance to talk since the last meeting until yesterday. Sure. If you could, if it's possible, um, I know I contacted Amy yesterday when I hadn't heard from her. Um, and I know she was at, um, I don't know if it was a graduation or what it was, it was a family event last Thursday, Friday, and the holiday Monday. But um, she had said that um, she was presenting stuff to your council. So um, do you think there's anything we can do to help promote that? I mean, do you, do you think that um, we need to tell these folks they need to get together? Yeah, so the lawyers did talk yesterday. And then we needed to sit down with our uh, tenant petitioner, the lawyers, and I just I just couldn't put that meeting together to go over everything to present properly to you um, for the petition. So I'm not 100% sure how we're going to come back to you, which is why I'm respectfully requesting if we could just have a continuance until the November meeting. Okay, I... Um... The site plan is an issue, I know, and what needs to be on the site plan is an issue. Um, it, in terms of a Berlin um, requirements, it was um, less than it needed to be. We need to be able to require you to record this. We require all site plans and the decisions that accompany them to be recorded in the registry of deeds so that there is a permanent record someplace as to what happens. Uh, one of the membership of the board, not myself, um, also brought up another issue and please be sure that it's resolved between the councils. And that is that in the, um, rent lease agreement there when it says what it's going to be used for it says cultivation um manufacture of uh cannabis products and home delivery fulfillment in our bylaw from the way I read it, and again, it, the lawyers can interpret it, this would require them to be a retail establishment. Um, if you look at, I looked in our bylaw under the definitions. If you hold on for just one sec. Near the back of the zoning bylaws. And by the way, Leanne, thank you for putting up the most recent one on our website. 
Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it wasn't me, so, but thank you. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just say thank you. And, and as, as You're soon, welcome. Okay. There is a section on um, marijuana definitions. Marijuana cultivator, that's understandable. Marijuana establishment is a marijuana cultivator, marijuana product manufacturer, marijuana retailer, independent, and just defines what they consider an establishment. And then uh, it says matter, marijuana product manufacturer, and there's a definition. And there's a definition, and, and obviously, um, manufacturer wouldn't be covered under um, this, but marijuana re uh, it does say uh, under marijuana product manufacturer, an entity licensed to obtain, manufacture, process, and package marijuana and marijuana products, and to transfer marijuana and marijuana products to other marijuana establishments, but not to consumers. So I think it was taken in the lease that you have that um, the um, home delivery fulfillment was like an Amazon delivering directly to the consumer. So they're gonna have to iron that out. Um, there was one other thing I just wanted to mention to you because in fairness, um, I think you do a good job of conducting the, and I know you have an interest in keeping this moving. Um, yes, just make sure that your tenant is aware of the fact that we would be looking, I believe, to issue the special permit to them, but that the special permit uh, would have a time limit because the only interest they have in that property is five years. So maybe they want to take a longer lease. I know they have, it says an option to extend for another five years, but that's not finite. Do you know what I mean? You have this signed contract. Correct. Okay. Did anyone else notice anything that they'd like to mention um, to Kathy so that um, we don't surprise her next time? Even though um, I have mentioned to Amy and she is aware of uh, the concern about the uh, home delivery fulfillment. We have a lot of questions about solar usage and water power and recycling. The building is two acres and that's a huge building. Um, also, any any information you get, can we have it a week to 10 days ahead of the meeting? I just don't have time to look at information 24 hours ahead of time. So we need yeah. this stuff at least so a week ahead. Just for my gratification, you were looking at um, the usage yeah, she said, we were talking before, you've got a two acre building and the runoff, why aren't they recycling water? Um, okay. The use of solar, other growers use both. They recycle and use solar. We're a green community, two acre building, that is huge. And that is uh, that was my concern too, with the rental agreement. If this doesn't come through, that's a lovely spot for Amazon to take, I mean, and the, your traffic study also, it's based on pretty much no information. Yeah, I think they they likened it to facilities like this, okay? Yeah, well, what, what kind of facility is it? We still really don't know. Um, and water usage. We questioned shifts the other time and you had it implied that it wouldn't use more than five homes of water. Well, if you have 132 employees in there every day flushing the toilet three times, 
and that doesn't even consider the usage you're using on your plants. You're using a lot of water. And I'd like to know the numbers, the usage. Also, Hudson turned you down for the water usage, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I want to know the difference between a public well and a private well. Why do you have a public well? You have to have a public well if you have more than 25 employees. Okay. That's a state Again, requirement. So this is, they wouldn't let you hitch up because of your water usage. So it has to be. No, they wouldn't, would let us, they wouldn't let us hitch up because we're, the building is in Berlin. It had nothing to do with the usage. So it's not for the water usage. No. What are you using for power? Is it Hudson? Uh, Hudson Light and Power, yes. Okay, so you can use the electrical, but you can't use the water. Well, you don't really have a choice. There's no way to get national grid to that site. So un, under the Utilities Act of the state, Hudson Light and Power is the source that would use right there. What do you have for backup in case the power goes out? Well, there's under the Cannabis Control Commission, it's required to have generators. Okay, and they're on all the site plans, the size and whatnot? Um, the size has not been determined, determined yet. Determined. We don't have the whole inside of the building designed. But you'll also have the determination on the plants, the number of employees, all that information for the next meeting. Right, that's what we, that's, that's what we were trying to get. That's part of you're going to have. With the lawyers. Okay, One and again, the usage of solar. I mean, I don't understand why you can't use solar somewhere if maybe not even for your growing, but well, why not the, for outside the, lights? The usage of solar doesn't make sense with the use of Hudson Light and Power. It's just not cost effective. Okay. Um, one of the um, things that Amy mentioned last time is that we do have to have some kind of a schematic um, yeah. for the interior. It's not even required by us, it's required by the state. Um, and we need to know some of, we can't get down into the minutia, but we need to have some understanding about the security to enter the building and that sort of thing um, to prevent thefts. The police chief, and um, the cannabis folks will work that out. Just so that you don't get blindsided, on the plan you showed us, there are 192 um, parking spaces. And um, the building inspector has determined how many parking spaces you will need based upon what the two areas are used as. If you look in his letter, I'm trying to think what he considers them parking and loading. Um, because there is no finite definition um, in the parking area for marijuana, he stated that what he felt the uses were. If you look at the I'm just slow here, I'm sorry. Um, parking. Austria parking, okay. I'm waiting on one section. There's a chart and it tells you how many pay um, parking spaces are needed um, based on what the use is. It's article eight, not, uh, the table of parking regulations is 811. And the two listings he's going on are manufacturing and warehouse and storage. So we definitely need to know what percentage of the building um, is used for what? Because if you look at warehousing and storage, um, well, if, if it were all considered manufacturing, 
you'd need one space for every 400 square feet of gross floor area. Okay. And I did the math and I don't think you want to have to create that many spaces. Uh, manufacturing and storage, uh, which would be what I believe he's considering, but you might want to check with him. The growing section, you need one space for every two employees on the largest shift, but not less than one space per 5,000 square feet. But that's right in the bylaw. Again, the two sections he's using, and we go by what uh, his stipulation is manufacturing and warehousing and storage. He likens, I believe, the growing to. The other thing is that were you to change the use of this building, if for some reason the cannabis folks weren't there, depending upon how you chose to use it, you may very well have to increase the parking. So I, I didn't want you to, you know, 10 years from now, if for some reason they're not there and you want to use it for another purpose, you ought to take a look at that table of parking regulations and think of what kinds and look at the limited business district in Berlin and see what um, you may consider using that building for and what kind of parking you would need. Okay, does anybody have anything else? Do you have any questions of us, Kathy? If I may call you Kathy. Absolutely. Yes, you Ms. may. Ms. Adams just seems a little. No. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, a lot of this is we needed to just get some time to sit down with the tenant, the lawyers, and, you know, just. Them all finally just talking yesterday just really put us behind the eight ball, and I didn't want to take up any of your time just doing some piecemeal presentation. Um, I think we appreciate that. Um, I would also suggest that you get a representative. Is it pronounced candle? Hello. Yes. yes, they would absolutely be present the next time. Okay. And again, this special permit would be limited to their interest. And right now I'm taking their interest to be um, five years unless other members of the board feel otherwise. They may choose to increase their lease. Okay, anybody else have anything? If not, if someone would like to make a motion um, to, at the request of the petitioner, continue the hearing for the special permit, site plan, and variance um, to our next meeting, which is November 8th? 9th. 9th. I'll get it right one time tonight. Um, <laughs> if someone would care to make that motion. So moved. Okay, Jim, is there a second, please? Second. Okay, thank you, Denny. I'll take a roll call vote. Um, Jim? Aye. Uh, Denny? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Pat? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Excellent. So you have your continuance and we look forward to seeing you um, at our next meeting. And I hope you um, have luck in bringing the parties together so that we can, believe it or not, we really don't enjoy drawing things out. So this is why, you know, the, the folks took a few minutes to express any concerns that they have. Um, Okay, it, what is, just out of my own curiosity, what is the other building down there used for? 
uh, Entwistle property? It's in Hudson? It's, yeah, it, it's on the road before this. On the left-hand side? Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a um, manufacturing facility. Okay. Yeah, they, they've been a tenant of ours for 50 years. 50 years? Yeah, actually 51. Oh, wow. Yeah, same, same family runs it. Excellent. And you're yeah. wise, you hold on to the, the property. President, the president passed away. He was a Berlin resident this summer unexpectedly. Oh, dear. Hmm. Yeah. Could I ask what they manufacture? Sure, it's mostly military. Um, you know, most of what their contracts are military contracts. So they do anything from like the, the wash decks that go on the aircraft carriers to the fire trucks that are on the aircraft carriers to special boxes that the military wants. They, they pretty much do from an engineering point of view, whatever they're contracted to do. Oh, wow. And we never knew it was down there. Yeah. It's interesting the things that you learn. Yes. So you you understand, Kathy, that this variance would only be good for this particular use, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, you're welcome to stay and we have another hearing coming up for um, a restaurant in town. Oh, that's good. That used to be the Flat Penny. Do you know where that is? I do. So that's coming back alive and we're, you know, pleased to see that happen. Good. But, but thank you very much and we'll see you next month. What okay. was the date we continued this to the... <laughs> November 9th. What time? Um, I'm guessing we're starting at 7 p.m. We don't have any other hearings as of yet. So that would be the first one at 7. Okay. It's 7 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is the, um, we've still got about another six minutes. We do. So, Lynn, um, yeah. I will have to do... Um, another set of continuation agreement to extend the decision, but the previous ones from this month are waiting for you in the box for your signature. Okay. But I'll let you know when I do the second set. So if, when you come in. You can do them all together. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I did come in and sign the other ones that were there from before. Yeah, yeah, I just got these back today so um so yeah so those need to be signed and then i'll have to do new ones for the continuation for next month yeah and when kathy um emailed yesterday about the um that she was thinking she was going to be asking for an extension okay i did email her back you saw that she yes was, i did yeah. yeah number one she'd have to be present and we have to vote and that you'd have to sign another extension. Right. Yeah, I'll email those to her tomorrow. And, and once I have those, I'll, I'll let you know so you can come in and sign. Okay. All right, would anybody like to take five minutes? Sure. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, yeah. <laughs> Is the petitioner for our uh, last hearing of the evening here? Yes. They are present as, as well as Louise Janta from Conservation. Okay. All right, let's take a five minute. Uh, unless someone objects, I'll um, declare a five minute recess and we'll return at eight o'clock for our next hearing.
Boy, they all left, all again. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm going to take advantage of getting out of their seat for five minutes. <laughs> okay. I'm here. I just don't want you to look at me playing on my, my phone. I set it off, I'd never get back again, probably. <laughs> well, then don't do that. I'm not. There you go. Yeah. What's going on? Ooh. Okay, folks, let's see. It's 8.01. Yes. Okay, I'll call the um, hearing for petition by Kyle Tucker for um, property um, at 263 West Street in Berlin. It's a request. I'm taking it as expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming, but um, what does the letter say um, from the building inspector? Um, I've got it here. Yeah. The, the, Pre-existing non-conforming structure. 
So, but his he says it's a require a special permit. Right, it's for an expansion to reconstruct, extend, alter, or change a non-conforming structure. Would you like me to promote the petitioner? If you would, please. And for the record, Lynn, I did verify that the um, the advertisement was posted in the paper twice by the dates um, required and also contact of abutters. It went to all the abutters and all but one signed for it received. Thank you. Mr. Taka, all right, we have Mark Adams. Yes, I believe he's the owner of the property. Yep. Okay. But it was Kyle that applied for the special permit, correct? correct. Yes. Is there a uh, purchase and sale agreement between yourself, Mr. Adams, and Mr. Tucker? No. So um, I'm going to remain the owner of the building, and um, Kyle represents the new tenant um, who is a restaurant. Do you have a rental agreement with the new restaurant? I do, yes. Okay, we're gonna need a copy of the rental agreement because we need to show interest. We would be, um, if he is to be a party um, as the petitioner, I would think that the special permit, and I mean, that we'll have to talk about it, would have to go to the property owner because this is a structural change in the building. So right. it would go to you, Mr. Adams. Yeah, I guess that was our understanding. That's why I think we changed the, um, the, the um, submission to put it in, in my name as the, uh, when, as the applicant. When did you do that? I, don't know, I thought Kyle did. Yeah, so originally we had it so, um, because I'm the VC for Mark and for the renter. I'm a man of many hats for them. Um, so being it in addition to the building that would be permanent, it was best to have Mark on it instead of the renter for the petition. Correct, because it's a change in the structure of the building. Correct. Um, and what by what method did you change the petitioner? Um, when we submitted the form to the, oh, I'm gonna get in trouble, the town clerk and- I have one signed by the town clerk September 14th and the applicant's name is Kyle Tucker. Yeah, that is accurate. Okay. That's what I have. Okay. But Kyle, I thought you changed it so I was the applicant. No, I changed it from you to me. Okay. On, on the application form that was received by the town clerk on September 14th. The applicant is Kyle Tucker. The property owner is Mark Adams. Yeah. I believe from what you're explaining now, it would be that we would issue this um, pre-existing non-conforming expansion uh, to Mark Adams, am I correct? Um. That would be your decision to make. From my understanding, it would be approved to me for being the one to construct it. From my understanding. Well, he needs to file it. You need to show an interest in the property in order to get a special permit, a site plan, um, or a variance. Yep. And your interest in the property is... Excuse me. Building it? Um, you, right. know, you know what I mean. No, I, 
I'm being clear. Okay. Um, let me explain. If you're not the owner, you have to have um, a legal interest in the property. The legal interest in the property would be in the form of a pending purchase and sale agreement, a rental agreement, or some other document that gives you interest in the property. So Kyle is the, the general contractor for the tenant. Right. But the permit will be granted to you, Mr. Adams. Right. Yes. I'm going to ask my colleagues if they disagree, but it would be my understanding that the permit would have to be in your name um, in order to be filed in the Registry of Deeds, which I would imagine you're planning to do as soon as anything is finalized. Right, yeah. Any of my colleagues have an issue with that? No. Nope. Do they think um, that? Agree. Yeah, I agree. I have a question. Uh, Mark, is this actually in your name or is this is a property owned in the name of an LLC that you run or own? Yeah, so it's in the name of uh, an LLC and I'm the, the sole member of the LLC. Okay, so it seems to me that the permit should be issued in the name of the LLC. Okay. And yeah, I mean, the way I understand uh, like a single member LLC, they're kind of interchangeable. Um, but I mean, we can do it either way. It's, it's fine. Well, we can mention both entities um, if you wish to consider yourself an entity. Um, but what is the name of the LLC? It's a uh, 263 West Street LLC. New Flat Petty LLC too. Is that different? Uh, I don't, that is not, I'm not sure where the, the town has that. Um, when I purchased the property, I purchased it in that name, the 263 West Street. But a lot of the old tax bills still show a new flat penny LLC. Yeah, because so. it's on your tax bill. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure why. But I actually okay. went down there today and was talking to them, and they're going to update everything. So. Okay. Okay. If it is the uh, agreement of the board, is there any problem with issuing the special permit in your name, Mr. Adams? No. Okay. All right, usually what we do, I just wanted to straighten out who the petitioner was and what the petition was for. But do you um, have a presentation to make to us? Uh, I believe Kyle does, yes. Okay, Kyle, would you like to speak for the petitioner? Sure, so I believe that everyone has a packet that I dropped off. So if you go to page 11, uh, ignore the new flat penny LLC branding on it because that hasn't been updated with the town. Um, but you'll see in the middle to top right corner. Um, a slashed out gray area where it says an existing outlet at the bathroom pointing to it. Um, that would be the area that uh, we need to pour a slab on or would like to pour a slab on for a new fridge freezer unit as the property has been neglected for many years and the fridge slash freezer unit that is currently there is not up to anyone's standards that I can know of. And in order to have a functioning restaurant, we're going to need a new fridge unit. And to fit it in that space that it is currently in wouldn't fit by the new sizes. So for the restaurants that were there previously, they were mostly like a, a freezer to table type of restaurant. And um, the current renter or contracted rental agreement um, working with them and they only cook basically fresh food. So there's no fresh food storage at all on the property. And 
as we all know, this property is just a little slice of pie and nothing is a conforming space to it. So by putting the new freezer unit in this location in the shaded box um, was the best fit, especially since we've already, um, we as in Mark has made the investment to upgrade the septic system uh, all to code. Um, so with all the updates ongoing to the building to make it a new functioning <laughs> restaurant, um, we would need the freezer uh, fridge unit. Um, so I just wanted to clarify to the board that it's not for extra seating or expanding the bar or anything like that. It's just to have the ability to have fresh food storage on site and an upgraded freezer that exceeds code now where the current freezer can't even handle that. It won't pass the health department. Um, so that would be removed and the new updated unit would be put in. And we would need to do a slab on grade for that particular unit. And that's about the gist of it. How many square feet are you adding to the footprint of the building? Um, currently it's about, let me get my calculator. Sorry, one sec. So additionally, out the back, it would only be about 100 square feet additional. Is, is it um, just a slab or is it a structure? Um, it's a slab on grade with the, the fridge unit. I would consider a structure because it bolts down to it. It's like a hard-sided industrial or commercial unit. But there's no um, siding or roofing or anything like that, right? Um, there's some roofing changes that would have to happen on the left side of that box to get water to shed away from the, the cooler. Like I, we don't want the, there's some adjustments to be made, yes. Is it going to be like a carport type structure as opposed to a closed in structure? Um, it would be a closed in structure and the door to the to the fridge slash freezer unit would be solely connected to the inside of the building. And with that would tie in um, a fire door as well out the back. So we made room for a fire door. There's no currently no fire exit out of the kitchen to the rear of the building. So that would give us rear access to the building as well. So while we were there, we figured we would add that to the improvement. Okay, you understand, um, and I know you've been to conservation, and I know you've been to, um, or I assume you've been to Board of Health, yep. and they, they are all in agreement with what you're doing? Uh, yes, they approved it on um, either two meetings ago for the conservation or last meeting. I'm not quite sure. I am on the board, so I should know, but with everything going on, it's been crazy I, over there. I noticed that. Oh, thanks. Um, so, CONCOM, <laughs> have you been to uh, Board of Health? Yeah, so Board of Health is aware of that, and it's all interconnected with the full approval of the kitchen. So she is aware of that and it's all tied in. So if this gets approved, obviously the kitchen layout changes because of the door and she needs to know before she can approve it, if we're getting a door or we're not getting a door and that type of thing. Okay, let's just take a quick peek at the pre-existing non-conforming bylaw. I want to see if we have the liberty. Most of these require a, a, a letter from uh, CONCOB and a letter from the Board of Health. So let's see what is required here. Do we have any correspondence from any of the abutters? I have not received anything. Okay. Nor have I. Okay. So all they do there is refer to a special permit. 
Let's take a look. And just make sure that we have what we need for a special permit. I think that comes under our administration section. Yes. And let's see what special permit granting authority. It's fine. Let's take a look at criteria. Conditions, regulations, fees. Hearing. doesn't say here, to the best of my knowledge, unless one of my colleagues um, notices something different. Um, that they have to have anything in writing from the CONCOM and the Board of Health. I didn't see anything. Okay, and there was nothing under non pre existing non conforming. But what we would do is we would require that you have the approval of those two, which should not be difficult for you, um, Kyle, <laughs> on one instance, but um, approval from the Board of Health. Our permit, were it to be granted, would be subject to. Um, all other boards um, having jurisdiction, their approval. Um, what is the size of the lot? One second. Okay. Would you say it's under half an acre, under a third of an acre? It is, it is point one eight acres. It is a small piece of heaven. Well, hopefully some good food. Um, Excellent food. You've really done well to be able to do what you want to do that satisfies everybody else. Um, any of my colleagues have questions or concerns or No, I'm, I'm a little confused only by the um, shaded area because it looks like the part of the building is going to get demolished to build the slab. Is that correct? Um, correct. Um, the part of the building that would be demolished is the um, existing cooler. The existing cooler would come out and the new cooler would go in and then there's about a four foot gap between the cooler and the wall which there'll be a that was, I was saying, the adjustment in the roof line to tie those yeah. two structures together. Okay, and the and a new egress, you said. Yep. Yep. And is that egress going to be uh, compliant? Or yeah, of course. Are you exempt from that? Um, everything. So we've already had meetings with the plumbing inspector, the fire marshal, Litchwell, and the newly promoted um, 
fire marshal and as well as Mr. Hank. And um, everything's getting updated to ADA compliant and everything's getting updated per code for fire exits and everything in the building. Okay. Uh, we've already updated the fire system completely for the entire building per uh, fire marshal, retired Litchwell. Um, and we have the blessing of the new fire marshal as well thus far. So everything's getting updated. Everything is being brought up to spec. Um, the building is well overdue for a overhaul and update. And um, she's getting the love she needs right now. So we're hoping to follow suit with that to get her all up to spec. Okay. And you don't need a ramp, ramp for anything. I have a handicap ramp currently that uh, is according to code path. Okay. I just didn't... I assume there had to be one anyways, because you're going to have dollies. But I just didn't see it on the plan. Oh, for the for the back. Yeah. So we only have one handicap ramp at the front right of the building closer to the larger lot. Um, and that one would be the entrance ramp for deliveries as well in the morning. So there wouldn't be like a loading dock or a delivery scenario out the back if that was a concern. Yeah, that was. That was part of the question. Yep, sorry. Uh, no, it'll be nice and grassy back there. So there won't be any nonsense going on. Well, the trains will have a nice view. There you go. Okay, just so that we can do record keeping, the plan that you referred to that says new flat penny LLC. Um, if it could be dated and signed by someone, then we can make reference to that plan when we make our decision. Yeah, that's perfect. I have Dillis and Roy working on that. They weren't able to get that over to us right away. They're, they're obviously inundated in their own way. So we're working with them to get that. It's the same company we used for the septic tank. When do you expect you'll be operational? Um, the hope was Halloween, but now with uh, um, some uh, I don't know, speed bumps, I call them. We're hoping for New Year's, a little a New Year's celebration for the the town. The reason I ask you is if you're going to produce an upgraded plan that we could use in our decision. Uh, it would be uh, helpful to us for record keeping. And it usually means that something is dated and titled. Um, would it make sense um, for you to come back uh, next month and bring the, send us the new plan that would probably serve the planning board, the Board of Health and Conservation? Who's going to do the plan? Hmm? Who's going to do the plan? Dillison Roy has the plan. And when is that due? Um, I can email him and find out. Uh, I would assume within a week or so. Okay. Um, I, if the board were to approve the concept, um, I wouldn't want to hold you up. But if you, you know, if you're still working on several other areas and a date of November would not be terrible, then I would suggest that, I mean, this plan is difficult to reference. Yeah, um, it was pretty generic in its um, display. Um, I actually have, am I able to share documents yes. on this thing? Yes. Um, any guidance to how you do that? Um, I may have to make you a co-host. Let me oh, try that. It's intimidating. <laughs> I think that now will give you the um, ability to share. All right, one sec. Let's get some stuff going here. <clears throat> uh,
just check with my colleagues. Um, would you prefer to see as part of the decision an upgraded plan or do you think it's not necessary or where do we stand on this? I, I think the, the whole lot is so small, this, whatever improvements they're making, I think are going to make it better, a lot better. I assume they are. <laughs> well, my, my concern mostly would be with the the neighbors, um, and since nobody's written back, I, I'm assuming they have no complaints. Yeah, I mean, I can say that, um, you know, I spoke with the neighbor that's kind of most impacted by anything is the Tataronis family, which lives next door. And, um, you know, Kyle and I met with him last week and kind of went over this plan and, um, you know, he has no objections to it. And, he supports it. I think, you know, what's important to him is that, you know, we're kind of doing everything the right way from start to finish. And, you know, we've definitely done that and he's excited about that. And I think all in all, it's been a very positive experience. So, um, you know, that's just what I can say about him. Well, the water for the facility comes from their house well, right? Sure does, yeah. We're seeing someone's screen. Is that your screen? That's my screen. Um, okay. There you go. So, can you see that okay? Yes. All right. So, do, do you also see my mouse moving? Yes. I'm just trying to relay. All right. Um, so, I don't know what AutoCAD keeps popping up. So, over here in this area by the number three, you'll see this is the area depicted for the um, new fridge unit and then you can see the new septic tanks that we put in with Dillis and Roy um, if I could zoom out one can only hope all right so now we're looking at the whole lot so again we're looking in this area of the lot this would be West Street over here this would be the parking lot with all the leach field from the previous plan and then if we go to this you can see this is a better depiction of the current kitchen, the prep area, and the new cooler. And then that would be where the fire exit would be, right here. So the new cooler is adding a 10 by what? 10 by 25, but there's currently already um, five feet by, it currently already comes out to about here. Um, your Chris, okay, so the building comes out to about the third stair uh, from the building, correct? Yeah, so can we be a cooler tool? All right, let's see here. So you're adding a strip that's what by what? So if you're looking, so this would be the additional area going out that I'll need the thing for the variant. And what is that in what by what? You said it's approximately a hundred square feet. Yeah, so it's, it's approximately, let me just do my math again, because I could be wrong. It's about four feet by 25 feet. Oh, so I did it wrong. So it's four times 25.7. So you're looking at 102.8 square feet to be 100% accurate. Well, you were a pretty good guesstimator. I I try, but it's a, I, perfect by no means. Um, and then here's a back layout of, I know we had concerns about the roof line, but you can see here, that's the adjustment we'd be making to the new cooler for the roof line. So that would be that part of it. So the cooler is a standalone structure. It's made out of galvanized. It's weather tight. It's going to be painted the same color as the building. 
per request of the neighbor and we like him a lot. He's actually been really nice to us. So uh, we have no problem in doing that. Well, it's gonna be contained within a structure though anyway, right? Um, no, the cooler is a standalone bolted down feature. So the cooler is the cooler. Like it's, it still looks like a structure. Yes, 100%, it is solid and, but it is the cooler itself. So it's a slab with supports for a roof. Is that what you're saying? Um, I'm, I'm saying it's a full slab for a cooler to go on. The cooler is its own roof. Does that make sense? Somewhat. Okay. The coolers, these industrial coolers are set up where they're basically two pieces of sheet metal with three inches, three or four inches of uh, foam between them, sandwiched Correct. in between. And then the whole thing bolts together so that these panels become the walls and the roof for the freezer itself. So it becomes a freestanding, it's, it's almost like building a prefab shed. Jim is you're, hired. You're um, you know, basically bolting these things together and then hooking a, a refrigerating cooler to it. Yeah. Correct. It's a kit. You, it, you just order a kit. Correct. And I can't order the kit until I have approval and it takes about, we're getting close, 16 weeks or so. It's supposed to be quicker, but. Um, and then there is some roof changes that you can see. At the, can, am I still sharing this over here? So the cooler to prep area, there is some roof adjustment as the building is old and there's some stuff going on up there that once we take the cooler out, I'm not sure how bad the rot might be or whatever variables may come about. Okay, well, I don't know about the rest of the crew. The only concern I would have if we were to choose to approve this would be to be able to identify it on a drawing. I think the drawing you just showed us um, would be sufficient. That's titled um, the new flat penny. <coughs> but it needs to be signed and dated by someone. We run into issues where there are iterations on these maps you know, they get updated and we need to know which one of the iterations we approved or declined to approve. Correct. Um, would this one on my current screen be a better depiction for you with the colors and whatnot? Would that it, be acceptable? It, it should be a map that shows the full lot. Oh. So we could have Dillis and Roy pop that on there and I can have that to you by end of week if that helps in any way. Would that be an acceptable form? I assume so. Well, it's difficult to vote on something that we don't have, but I think if we were to reference the fact um, and it were to come dated and signed um, and would be the same 100% depiction as what you're presenting to us now, um, the board may be willing to um, agree that as long as the map that comes forward that can be referred to in the decision and that they can see at the time they sign the decision, um, it may be acceptable. How do you folks feel? I'm fine with that. Anybody else have a positive or negative inclination? Looks good to me. Okay then. Um, If there are any other questions about this proposal. Looks good. If not, I'd entertain a motion 
to approve the addition. Of Lynn, Lynn, I'm sorry. I believe I was muted. Okay. I have a question. All um, right, Jimmy, go ahead. Uh, I would just like to go back to the discussion we had. I'm assuming this property does not have a well. Is that correct? So we have um, a shared well with a neighbor with um, deeded water rights. Oh, they're deeded. So correct. If, if you and the neighbor decided they didn't like one another, you would continue to have rights to water. Yeah, well, there's um, it's all in the deed and it says, you know, basically it's uh, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's our well as well. So we have an agreement. Um, sign for that and um you know there's i guess it's just how it is well you do know how fortunate you are that you're pre-existing non-conforming right yeah of course because you would never be able to do this now right of course yeah okay. all right well that answered my question okay jenny so would the board care to vote to approve or deny um, the petition in the name of uh, Adam, Mr. Adams, Mark Adams? Do you have no objection to that, do you, Kyle? No, 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 I do not, um, thank you. Okay, Lynn, if I may? Yes. Um, I propose that um, we approve the special permit uh, for 263 West Street LLC, care of Mark Adams, um, for uh, an expansion of the existing non-conforming building um, by roughly 100 square feet as proposed, um, pending uh, an updated drawing. Uh, and approval by the Conservation Commission and approval by the Board of Health. Second. Could I just suggest you make it 103 feet so that there aren't, um, his math comes out to 102 point something, so. Uh, how about if I say 100 square feet plus or minus 10? Sounds good. Provided uh, that a um, plot plan is provided, dated and signed, as was shown at the hearing. Is that what you're yep. saying, Jim? Yep, with the updated drawing, dated and signed, the Board of Health um, approval letter, and the Conservation Commission approval. Oh, there's a button for that. And meeting the needs of any other department that may um, feel they have a mm heavy -hmm. input. You guys will get to see what gets written down, and then we'll. Um, so you think you can have that house soon? Because the sooner the better, Kyle. Um, I can send an email over uh, this evening, and then if I don't get a response by lunch, you'll be sure I will be calling them to confirm with a future turnaround and hopefully by the weekend. I know it's on their computer already drawn up. I just don't have a signed stamped one to give to you at this time. And dated, yes. And dated, understood. Um, Lynn, I just had a question as well. Um, where the special permit's gonna be in my name, do you still need a copy of the lease? No. Okay unless any of my colleagues disagree. And if you were to provide a lease, you know you can deduct whatever isn't relevant. Yeah, sure. Um, does anyone object to not requiring a copy of a lease or a purchase and sale agreement so long mm -hmm. as the permit is being 
um, issued to the property owner. Now he's a property mm -hmm. owner. I don't see why that should be necessary. If he was, if he was the restaurant, then I would say the lease. But he's the property owner. I don't see why um, the fact that he's leasing it to somebody else. It doesn't seem relevant to me. Well, plus it's a physical expansion, and that should go to the owner as opposed to yeah, um, the lessor anyway. Do they Anyone still have need to come down and amend the application? I would suggest to you that um, we have um, the petitioner, Mr. Tucker, and that he did it uh, for Mr. Adams, um, not understanding that as the contractor, he has no interest in the property and we can only deal with those. And the fact that Mr. Adams was present at the hearing and um, both Mr. Tucker and Mr. Adams agree to the permit being issued in the name of Mr. Adams, I don't see that that's an issue, but how do the rest of you feel? Uh, does it need to be in the decision? I can put it in, I can put it in there if you wish. I'm, I'm just thinking five years from now, if we go back to look at it and say, oh, that's the wrong name on there, that we have a record of what we did. Right, it would be in the file under Mr. Tucker's name as petitioner, but the issuance would be to Mr. Adams. Um, so yes, I, I, I see what you're saying, but in the decision, we can put that the petition was filed by Mr. Tucker on behalf of Mr. Adams and that it is the wish of both Mr. Tucker and Mr. Adams. You know how I write down all of the considerations. That could be one of them. That satisfies my concern. And again, take a look at the um, plot plan that's gonna be presented to us that will be made reference to in the decision and make sure that you're comfortable that you've seen it here tonight when you come to sign it. Just for both of you to know, um, I'm old and I'm slow, so it usually takes me a week to write the decision anyway. Um, That's fine. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. Um, the law says you can't. Um, <laughs> it, and, um, then it has to be put at the town hall for signatures um, by uh, our board. Um, they come in individually, that can take a bit. Once those are accomplished, it's filed with a clerk. Now there is a 20, way, 20 day waiting period uh, for it to be official. The building inspector will tell you, as he has told many other folks, that um, what it is, is it's to give people an opportunity to challenge the decision. They have 20 days. Um, a copy of the decision will be sent to the abutters. Um, and I don't believe there's any notice to them that they have 20 days to challenge it. But the building inspector in the past has told folks, if you want to take a chance and go ahead and do the construction or the ordering or whatever, in other words, the board has approved it. The only thing that could go wrong would be someone in the neighborhood challenging it. Okay. Understood. Have I totally confused you or? No, no I just... No, I got it. So, Do I need to record anything? It will oh. be required with the special permit. We require you to record it after after the 20 days pass. You will get um, a paper from the, um, well, you're going to get in the mail 
a copy of the decision, but there's an addendum that goes right on to it. And it's signed by myself for the board and it's signed by the town clerk, basically saying that the 20 days have passed. And in other words, this is a final decision that will come later. That will come after um, the 20 days passes. Okay. And on it, on the decision, it will say um, that the uh, granting does not take effect until after the 20 days has lapsed. And it is your responsibility, I'm assuming, Mr. Adams, unless you're going to do this for him, Mr. Tucker. It needs to be filed in the registry of deeds and proof of such has to be given to the town clerk. Okay. In other words, they give you um, a receipt like thing saying that you posted whatever um, at the registry of deeds for this book and page and whatever. And that a copy of that receipt needs to go back to the town clerk. Okay. Because we say that the, the special permit will not be in force until you do that. Right. Okay, does anybody have anything else? If not, I'll in, we do we have a motion on the floor? We yet? have a motion and I believe we have a second. So you just need to vote. Okay, what are we doing about the footage? Let's clarify what the footage says. Well, right now it, it says 100 plus or minus 10 square feet. Okay, is that amenable to everyone? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take a roll call vote. Um, Pat? Pat? <laughs> You're, You're muted. muted. Aye. Jim. Aye. Susanna. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. So that um, is a unanimous vote. So I hope you understand, you know, what the process is going forward from here. <laughs> Um, and again, it will be subject to you receiving um, paperwork from conservation and um, Board of Health. Um, but what usually happens is that prevents you from getting a building permit, not in filing the paperwork and so forth. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? He shakes his head like he's Alice in Wonderland here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, gentlemen, um, um, unless you'd like to visit with us, um, I think um, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. Don't move. Seconded. Okay. Uh, Thank you all. Pat. Aye. Susanna. Aye. Jim. Aye. Jenny. Aye. And I'm an I. I'm an I too. Oh, I'm sorry, Jenny. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anything else that needs to be before the the board? Uh, I just have one quick question. Yeah. H have copies of the current zoning bylaws been printed in hard copy? I received one um, in the office, but I and I did request one for all board members, but so far I've only received one. 
I called down there to Jim the other day because my old one does have nothing about the marijuana in, in it, the new one. Yeah. And she doesn't have any printed, she said. Uh, yeah, Lynn, can we do something about that so we can get a hard copy? I would suggest to you that we mention it to Amy because I think it is state law that it has to be printed. Okay. <clears throat> they can afford to give us five, six copies, can't they? Oh, yeah. Uh, and that you can't rely on the um, whatever's online, you have to have a hard copy from the town clerk. So okay. I would suggest that we mention that to Amy just to get her buy in before we approach the town clerk demanding hard copies, if you know what I mean. She was, of course, they were very sweet down there, and she said she'd run it off on the copy machine. <clears throat> but, I mean. Which I guess she did. Like I said, I, I came in this morning to find the one on my desk, but it literally is just one hard copy. There's a lot of run on the copy machine. Mm -hmm. What I think they're doing is the AG approved the changes to the articles um that were voted last may and they are to be incorporated in the zoning bylaws and they didn't want to be running off any copies now if they were going to be making changes updates um, permanent updates to the bylaw next month okay mm -hmm. i think it's usually ellie that does the actual updating um, or maybe it's James that's the assistant uh, assistant town clerk. But right now with elections, um, I know they're very busy. I know this, I don't know if anyone here has requested a mail-in ballot, but I, best, I guess there's been a lot of them. Well, that may be, but I mean, we have two town meetings every year. Um, and zoning issues tend to come up at each one of those. So by the time the AG gets done reviewing each town meeting, you know, it's time for the next one. And um, I mean, the copy I have, I still have a 2018. I do too, yeah. So, I mean, it's been a while since there's been a printed copy printed out. That yeah. Has been distributed. Either. If you look online, it still says it's the 2018 copy. I'm not, what I'm saying, Jim, is there are changes in the zoning bylaw that were made this last May that I had Leanne send you a note that they had been approved by the AG. Yeah. Yeah, I got those are, I got those too, Lynn. But when I called and asked because the new, there is a 200, there is a 221, which is probably the one Leanne has. And it has all the marijuana in there, all the marijuana. The marijuana has nothing in the latest version of the 2018 also. We updated, okay. But There's, she said, I think that's why they, she told me just to go online for any additional stuff. Well, any individual can do whatever they want. My suggestion would be to find out if legally the state requires that they be printed. And um, then perhaps we could bring that to their attention. I, well, I think as a board member, wouldn't it be in their best interest to make sure we have the updated version when they come out? I, I don't think that's too much to ask them to give us a free copy. Oh, they will give us a free copy when they're printed. See, they do a printing, okay, of, I don't know, 100 copies or 150 copies. And then the planning board takes one and one comes to us and one goes to the um, building commissioner. Um, but 
I mean, I think the fact that it's online, the thought is, well, you guys can look online and see it. I, I'm a little like you, Pat. I like a hard copy because I like to sometimes write notes on things. Yeah, I did too. I scratch all over it. So what yeah. you're saying is if we actually ask, they could get another printing going? Well, I, I think when we approach anyone after talking to Amy, the fact that okay. it's required by law yeah. that they print yeah. copies yeah. Um, okay. have some influence okay. or um, maybe push things along a little. It carries uh, some weight. Okay. There's no reason. I know James has been known to um, run off copies, you know, I mean, to print what's out there. Okay. Um, for folks. In fact, I think he has the ability to even put one of those um, worm binders on it. So, um, you know, it, it, it's up to you what you want to do. I'm just suggesting that when Amy is here for other reasons, um, it may be well to mention the fact okay. uh, or ask the question. Okay, anyone have anything else or any discussion that may be about our personal lives that we want to take? Maybe best not put on um, TikTok or whatever. No. Actually, if are we all set? Um, is it okay if I? Oh, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. That. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you. I'll okay. second. Okay, we have a motion and second to adjourn. Uh, I'll take a roll call vote. And Jenny, you come first this time. Aye. Pat. Aye. Jim. Aye. Susanna. Aye. Jenny. Aye. And I'm an aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>